Hey guys, Steve Blair. Today we're gonna look at the Dells for you. There's Norm Scott. I got Macau and Vine on there. We'll talk about the build uh, throughout this game. But uh, we got a bit of a barn burner on this game here. I checked the damage record after it was over. Chili, our buddy Chili, he beat me by about 20k damage. I had about 95 more hits than he did, and he had about, I don't know, it was about 15 more fires or something like that. It was a lot more fires. So after this game, I kind of went into the uh, members section of my Discord and kind of posited the uh, question, well, maybe we need to rethink the EOP, but a few of the guys in there made some good points. You know, the EOP, basically what that does is it enhances the penetration of these shells, the HE shells, and uh, that's especially helpful in these light cruisers because they're not going to be penetrating a lot with their low caliber guns, but it cuts the fire chance in half. So I was kind of thinking, well, in this particular game, if I didn't have that perk on, maybe we would have had the damage record for this ship. But in general, the smart money is on the consistent damage. And if your light caliber, light cruiser guns aren't really doing any raw damage, then you're rolling the dice trying to get those fires. Sometimes you're going to get lucky, you're going to get a lot of fires. You'll rack up the damage that way. Sometimes not. Sometimes you're going to have a little bit less luck when it comes to fires like we're going to have in this game. Anyways, we got the center spawn here. Now I'm going to be playing C. Opening intention is to get to that long island, but uh, it's tough to get all the way over there from the opening position, so we're going to kind of do a 180 and kind of play that small island just to the left of the center there. But my build, you know, these American light cruisers, you got a lot of options. Even if you don't have the event commanders uh, like the Azure Lane Baltimore, or the Einstein Halloween Commander from a couple of years ago, you still got options that would work for between Kincaid and Norm Scott. Now, if you have both lines going, the heavy cruisers, uh, that's the Pensacola, New Orleans, Baltimore, and you got the light cruisers, Dallas, Helena, and Cleveland. Well, I'd still try and differentiate the build. So you can set one up for one build because they, they have different needs. Basically, these light cruiser guns... We're going to be trying to spray the enemy with these golden showers. Just kind of get them annoyed, push them back. That's kind of the idea with these light cruisers. The heavy cruisers, of course, we evolve into radar cruisers later down the line. But they got really punishing guns. You're going to want to enhance the AP. Now, if you played the heavy cruisers, Pensacola, New Orleans, uh, Baltimore, horrible turret traverse. So that's why I usually recommend Kincaid there. You can use the ingenious perk. Not only does it give you the indicator telling if you're being targeted, but it improves the turret traverse dramatically, which is very helpful. So we also have an indicator telling us if we're targeted on this build. That's in the slot three. And that one also increases the incoming dispersion of the enemy shell. So makes it a little bit uh, less accurate. Now, if we got Vian on there, you notice the build. That's an incoming dispersion inspiration. That slot three perk we just noted. The uh, concealment modules when available on the higher tier ships, and the ship's camel. Those are four sources that are influencing the incoming shots, making them less accurate. And that's those four combined, that's really a huge amount of incoming dispersion. So not only will you be canceling out any accuracy perks that the enemy has, but you're still gonna be dragging it more into the less accurate territory there. So that's why I favor this build. Light cruisers like Dallas, we don't wanna be getting shot. If we're getting a shot, we're getting killed. That's kind of the rule of the thumb. So if we can uh, decrease the accuracy of those guns. Uh, that's all the better. Now I want to talk about uh, auto aim here for a moment, quote unquote. It's when we're zooming in. Uh, basically when you zoom in, when you have the ship targeted, that means the circles around that icon there, the game will often suggest a rough position where you can hit. Now if you just zoom in, rely purely on the auto aim, pull the trigger, you're probably going to hit it. It's not always uh, that accurate. The more experience you get with that the aim technique the better you can read it but I always I don't always but usually I'm gonna be making adjustments once we see where the game's suggesting and then the other thing that we want to talk about here when are we getting sighted and that's an important thing for the ship and the viewpoint from the enemy's perspective when they can spot us that's from the middle of our ship so basically you see that dotted line pointing directly up on the diagram there uh, right where it's pointing on the ship that's roughly the midpoint so if that's obscured Let's say we have the front half of the ship sticking out, uh, pull the trigger, we don't get spotted. It's because that middle part of the ship is still obscured by the ion. So that's a very important concept in general. 
very important for these light cruisers because we need to be playing the island cover extensively with these light cruisers. High arcing shots, and you can see we can float these shots over a lot of land masses that we couldn't normally with most guns. But the closer we can get to those while still being able to fire, the harder it is to return fire even if we get spotted because the shells are often going to be coming in at a flatter angle and they're not going to have the height clearance to hit us there. So knowing when your ship is going to be spotted, potentially when you pull the trigger, very important. Uh, the auto aim, if we're going to be firing at ships that are obscured behind these islands, that's something you want to practice. Again, you need to select the target and I think it's the right uh, bumper on the controllers, at least on the controller scheme I use, you have to have the target selected, otherwise it's not going to actually lock on, and it'll be aiming at the island. You can see we're on the screen we're pointing at the island, but the shots are going over. That's because we have that target selected. So what we're doing here, we're just trying to keep these guys out of sea. This is kind of the Gandalf, you shall not pass type of a play style here. You plop down these light cruisers and get them in a strategically important position and then dare the enemy to push into you. Now, that's how you counter these light cruisers. You have to move into them, especially the American ones that don't have torpedoes. They can't protect themselves when being pushed into. But if we have good support from our team like we do here, that's going to make it very hard for ships to aggressively push into us. So we plop down. We're going to be moving back and forth, keeping an eye on are we targeted, are we spotted, are people actively shooting at us, are they distracted by something else. But we want to just keep spraying these guys uh, all over the place. Just get them dirty, make them go home, take a shower, you know, <laughs> after you've pummeled them with your golden showers. And that's very frustrating. They usually go on Reddit, they complain about HE spam, and they want the cruisers nerfed. If, you, if that happens, then you're doing it correctly. So that's the idea here. Note we got A, they got B. Those are the caps that are signed from birth on this map, and then C, hotly contested. We got a destroyer. Now, he's getting pretty close to that battleship. I think it's the King George pushing in. And if you're a destroyer sitting on the cap, you got people pushing into you aggressively. Down he goes right there. You got to recognize that. I guess it was a Nelson that got him. But just because you're on the cap doesn't mean you can't get off it. And I know we talk about destroyers, how important it is for them to capture bases. It's the key role in domination mode. If you're not doing... If you're not capturing bases as a destroyer, when you're playing domination mode, you're contributing to the enemy's win chances. You're hurting your own team by ignoring the cap. So I'm never going to fault them for trying to capture the bases. But you got to understand when these ships are pushing into you aggressively, especially if you're on tor torpedo cooldown, you're in between the salvos, you got to get out of there. Because as soon as they spot you, those guns are very accurate at close range, and they'll go ahead and whack you. So there are Mayhem still running around. Our gate is dead. Trying to been, I've been pinging this Mayhem for the majority of the game, trying to take some shots. It's not that I still want to shoot at this thing, even with these long travel times. These shells don't really get down range at max range very effectively. Uh, we still want to be taking those shots. If we get lucky, we can do a little bit of damage here and there, but we got to get rid of them. Now, Mayhem, not the strongest torpedo thread because it's very hard for them to stealth launch torpedoes, but if that guy's playing the role well, and our team starts to get thinned out a little bit, then he can start to go cap to cap. And this game's going to come down to the wire in score. So, um, you know, it's a paramount importance in every game get rid of those destroyers. They are the scoring pieces. If they're played correctly, they're the ones who are winning and losing the games. Everyone else is there to kind of support that effort. So now we got A, we got C, but take a look on the map there. Uh, they got two ships remaining in the northeast. We got nothing currently stopping them. They kind of wiped out our defenders over there. We do have a cruiser directly to the north of us. He's moving in to try and slow them down, but I got to be keeping an eye on this map the entirety of the game. We'll turn around, take a couple shots, try and get some resets when applicable, but we're on C. We're defending C. We already own C, uh, so this is kind of the position we're playing right now. This is the one that we're primarily responsible for. King George, we definitely need to be keeping an eye on his guns, keeping an eye on whether we're targeted, uh, like we are right there. If that guy whacks us, he can whack us hard with HE. If he's got the AP loaded, he could potentially one-shot us. Very dangerous. So we're going to pull out there as soon as we notice that he's got us on the mind. Then we're going to go pull right back here, get safe. And if we could time it perfectly, drop anchor so we just had those front two guns sticking out, once again, we could be shooting him for more or less free. He could potentially blind fire us there, but he wouldn't see the ship visible. He wouldn't be able to lock onto us as a target. It would be a much less accurate shot, much more difficult shot. But we elect to pull all the way back here. I'm trying to utilize that little ridge all the way on the 
uh, right hand side of that iron. See if we can lob the shots over there. Remain undetected. Currently plane spotted. He's got uh, we got some planes and bomb the torpedo bombers. So we got to keep an eye on the fact that we're spotted. But as long as we're not targeted, uh, then we know we're all right at least for the moment. Hood goes down. Good torpedo strike. I think both carrier players in this game uh, do quite a bit of damage to each other's team. So from what I've seen when I've been paying attention to the carriers, I think they're playing pretty well. But uh, that's nothing we can really do here. Now let's say technically we turn around, we go towards A to try and stop that push. We could be effective over there, but King George just immediately moves into C. And then if they still win the fight on A, then we could potentially be down three caps. So that's why I'm still trying to be over here. Uh, we got the torpedo bombers coming in. Luckily, he dropped just a little bit too close. Got hit with two of them, but neither of them armed. Uh, he launched just a little bit too early there, so we got a little got a little lucky there. It wasn't going to necessarily wreck the game, but could have potentially caused some problems. So now we're kind of in the situation where the destroyers, if that King George pushes into us aggressively, we got to keep an eye on him. We got to keep some distance between us. The closer the battleships get to the cruisers, in general, advantage battleships. Yes, they got to pay attention to the torpedo threats, uh, but if assuming they're doing their job well and they're paying attention to that thing, that can be neutralized there. Now here we're going to kind of divide our attention. I'm hoping the King George, uh, I think he's on fire right now. Well, it looks like a damage con, but I'm just, I don't have a shot currently, so we might as well just shoot over here, try and get some resets. We're going to hit the Aoba, trying to support this, and we're kind of really in the middle of the map if you look at our position. Uh, so we're trying to support whatever we can here, being as active as possible. Finally decide, all right, we got to get rid of this King George. He's on the base. This is problematic. I'm trying to stay behind this island. Like right now it says he's targeted, and that means we're selected, or we're targeted, sorry. That means we're selected on his screen. Our ship's icon has that circle, but he can't hit us because of this island. His shots, flat trajectory, ours float right over this thing. So we're just going to be raining these showers down on him here, and down he goes with a little help from the Ryuju. And now we have no more threat over here in terms of capping. Technically, yes, the cruiser or the carrier could move up here, but that's extremely unlikely in general and based on his last known position uh, very very unlikely Aoba goes down there we were gonna try and chime in there uh, but we've lost both of the cruisers on each side so it's me and the battleship versus the Bayern and then a carrier on each side so things are looking pretty good at this point in time note they're still within 100 points which means if the carrier or the battleship sink the other battleship they'll be in the lead at least temporarily they're on a so each team is only getting one uh, one portion of cap generation or whatever you want to say. One cap generating points per side. But note what we're doing here. We're open watering. Now you can see some players that advocate open watering every cruiser. I like to play certain cruisers with more open water like the Japanese. But this one, turning wise, maneuverability wise, not what it's designed to do. It's more designed to hug the islands and utilize that cover. But what are we doing over here? Well, we don't have any spotting. He removed the only ship that was pointed over here, and if we're not the one spotting him, then we're not going to be able to spot him. So we've kind of chased him off of A, at least for the moment. He's abandoned that. That's a mistake on his part. He needs to at least sit on A while trying to kill us. But we're just kind of bobbing and weaving here. Now, once again, he's blocked behind the island. Even if his plane happens to spot us, he can't shoot over that. We can keep lobbing these shells over here, and we're just whittling them down. And we're en route to uh, over five times our ship's HP and damage, I believe. So this is an example of high damage output for these light cruisers. They're definitely capable of it. You want to get rid of them as soon as possible if you got shots at them. You know, it's one of those ships that the longer you leave alive, the more dangerous it's going to be. Just because, you know, it can't do a lot of damage in short bursts, you know, in most situations. But left alive throughout the course of the match, you can pile up 100, 150k damage. Uh, without any issues with these things so byron's now realizing the, okay i got to get back on the cap here plus he doesn't have a shot at me so he's backing up back into a and we just once again resume dodging and this is kind of when that vian build the incoming dispersion build kind of pays off there you know byron not necessarily the most accurate ship known to man granted but anything we can do to disrupt the accuracy that it does have increases our survivability so i really like that quad uh dispersion you know incoming dispersion build that i run on the norm scott line and that's you know a couple examples those incoming salvos that's kind of why i like to run it at this point in time the game's over this guy has to sink 
you know, me and the battleship, and well, I guess the carrier could technically sink the battleship. I don't know what his health status is, and maybe if this Byron one-shots us, but at that point in time, uh, it's coming down to cap control, and it's because we have those two caps to one for a huge chunk of the match that the score is what it is, and then there goes the uh, <laughs> torpedo bombers to finish them off. So that's a look at the Dells for you guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. We've got lots of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you, and see y'all later. Peace.